What is up YouTube? That's here and today I'm back and I'm super excited to be bringing you guys some more Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl team building. Today we're using a super super cool Pokemon. We're going to be using Infiltrator Choice Band Crobat and we are going to be destroying the OU ladder with it. So Crobat, yeah, what does it really bring to the table? What does Infiltrator do and how did I build my team? Let's take a look at our stats right now. You can see uh, we're using a choice band to get ourselves a 1.5 attack, but it locks us into the first move that we use, and we're pairing it with Infiltrator. Now, Infiltrator is really, really a unique ability. It ignores substitutes and screens and things like Aurora Veil. So that's really, really good. There's tons of dual screen setters right now. Azelf's a great screen setter. And there's a ton of sub mons, you know, things like Breloom and stuff like that. So we're going to be breaking those subs and they think they're so safe. And I bring in my Crobat and I just go for the absolutely massive damage. We have a pretty cool choice band moveset. Brave Bird, Cross Poison, pretty good stabs. U-Turn makes us a great lead. Quick attacks there just in case we need it in the late game scenarios. I also will say this EV spread... It's made to outspeed base 110s like Latios, while still giving me the ability to be adamant. I don't think we need to be 252, 252 on a lot of these mons, and I think that that's where the ability to be like a good player comes from. I can make them respect my ability to rock my 130 base speed, 252 jolly nature, but for the most part, I don't really want to fight Weavile, and if I fight Weaviles, I can always switch to other things to deal with them, or I can just quick attack and do like over 40% because we're just that strong. So the plan is to be a bully versus everything slower than 110, force them to respect those options, and just be in a really, really good position. You're actually going to see a couple times in the replays that we're going to show today that I see things like Azelfs that are base 115. I let them set their screens, and I punish them with Infiltrator. So it's actually super, super cool. Um, let's take a look at the rest of the team. We're rocking a Gliscor set. And I actually want to play a little bit of a longer game sometimes to fish for my correct pins. The correct play is to go to Gliscor uh, and then soak damage, go for a knockoff to get rid of anything like a leftovers or a choice scarf. And then from there, go for a super slow speed reduced U-turn so I can then bring in my uh, Crobat safely. And I also think even though they both share an ice weakness, they go really, really well together because uh, Gliscor's ground typing makes it so I don't have to be afraid of electric attacks when using Crobat and Starmie. So really, really good core there of Crobat, Gliscor, Starmie. Speaking of Starmie, um, I do like the Starmie set a lot. Very, very cool Starmie set leftovers. It's a wall Starmie set, and it's a little bit Let's Go-esque because I'm rocking Thunder Wave. And you can see I only have one attack here, and that's Scald. I don't have Ice Beam, I don't have Psychic, I don't have Thunderbolt. I don't have anything like that. I don't have any points in Special Attack. Uh, I have just enough speed to outspeed um, things that outspeed Garchomp by one point. Now, you could say, well, then why don't you put Ice Beam if you're trying to check Garchomp? And Garchomp shouldn't really try and fight Starmie, and it would still take about 200 points of special attack investment for me to check a Garchomp. So I can, I, if I have to fight a Garchomp, I can Scald it, but I also know that since I'm rocking full HP and relatively solid bulk, I should be fine. This Starmie is a great pivot to switch to, to alleviate damage, throw up a Thunder Wave, recover to wait out turns uh, if I need to wait out like a Weather or any sort of other, you know turn specific move or ability and then I can just switch out so Starmie is great for soaking damage it also plays in point with Blissey I want to talk about how statuses are super important Thunder Waves are big Toxics are big Will-O-Wisps are big Spores are big all those things and so having two natural cure mons to be able to switch in between them late game is super super good at dealing with teams that require those dots to actually play accordingly remember in the last video we made where we talked about arcanine you want to double up on the things you're strong against you want to double up on the things you need to succeed and then you want to double up on the things that you need to defensively succeed as well so case in point what, what are we doubling up with on this team we have choice man crowbat we're also rocking with with priority moves we're rocking choice man weavile also very fast pokemon uh, outspeeds the crowbat by one point so if for some reason crowbat doesn't outspeed something um, it, it would normally outspeed base 110s, and I would think maybe they're scarfed. Weavile might outspeed that because uh, it outspeeds Crobat the, by one point as well. But again, choice ban, potential priority move Mon, so very, very good. Um, we also even have like Scizor for priority moves if we need it. But um, you see, you see, you have doubling up on our strengths, doubling up on our uh, not only natural cure, but our Thunder Wave users as well. We use another Thunder Wave, Blissey. We only have, um, I think, the one Rock Setter on this team. But rocks aren't that important. You're actually going to see me not go for rocks unless I'm in an overwhelmingly advantageous situation in these games. So Blissey's super, super good. Just defense, but F, nothing special here. And uh, that's going to basically be a very basic Scizor set. I think we showed this off yesterday. And it's just a really, really solid set for Scizor to come in and alleviate pressure. We do have Rapid Spin and Defog. That's another thing we're doubling up on. I usually like to have both these if I'm rocking a team who's specifically weak to rocks. 
Note that I am on Crobat and Weavile. But other than that, there are no glaring weaknesses type-wise with this team. Very, very good, solid defensive typing. And I do think we have the tools to win some games. So I actually already played the games, I actually already built the team. But we're, we're going to hop into some games and I'm going to break down my turn-by-turn -turn thought process in a few replays that I have here. Showing how I play the team to give you guys a better insight on what you guys can be doing when you're playing your own game. So you can see this very first game, we're going up against Tokus Azumarill, Crawdont, Weavile, Mamoswine, Gliscor. Now on paper, I think they have a great matchup. Um, Crobat, yeah, you could say Crobat's great versus like Tokus and Azumarill, but like Togat, sorry, Togacat. Um, Crobat loses to like Belladrum Aqua Jet. It loses to like uh, Swords Dance Aqua Jet from Crawdont. It loses to Ice Shard from both Mamo and uh, Weavile. And then like, we can't really do that much to a Gliscor. So it's going to be really, really hard for me to play to my strengths and use the Infiltrator Choice Band Crobat correctly in this game. Um, so i trying to remember what I lead with in this game. I think I lead Scizor, but we're going to start off in just a, sense, a sec. Scizor is a great lead here. Um, what The thing I always think you guys should be doing when you're playing your games is you want to have a lead option that you don't necessarily like have to set Rock Turn 1. You don't have to win from the first turn, but you have to lead with a Pokemon that doesn't put you in a dip disadvantageous position and always have options to switch to. So for example, I think I lead Scizor. I'm just going to go for that. Um, and then we'll like restart it just to see. Gliscor. Okay, that's fine. Gliscor is also fine. So let's just go for the reset here. Um, Gliscor is a fine lead. Let's talk about the advantageous situations, both of them. Um, if you live with Scizor, right, and they live with Gliscor, that's cool. I U-turn. I'm fine. I'm actually going to be slower than you, so I'll be good. If you live with Mamoswine, that's great for me. You can set rocks. I can punish. If you live with Weavile, that's fine. Bullet punch. Great job. If you leave Crawdon, I can soak the knockoff because we've actually been Eevee trained to live that. Uh, U-turn out, Clock Sash, or KO, and we're fine. Against Azumarill, it's a little bit dicey. I mean, I think that is why I ended up leading with the Gliscor. But um, yeah, Azumarill's a little bit dicey. I'd have to just start trading bullet punches and then rely on Azumarill not being able to Oko my Starmie, which would be not great. And then Tokus, I would scout for Flamethrower by switching to Starmie turn one. And if they happen to go for a Thunder Wave, cool. That's why we have Natural Cure. So those are the advantages of leading with Scizor, which is not a bad leap. Um, I think I did decide to leave with the Gliscor because a lot of the same things stack. Against other Gliscors, I can knock you off so you don't get your item boost. Against Mamo and Weavile, I can switch right up to Starmie. Um, against, like, uh, Crawdont, um, I can switch to... I wouldn't be... I'd be a little bit pinned if they led Crawdont there. So I guess Scizor in review here might have been actually a better lead. Um, I guess I could switch to my Scizor, and I wouldn't die. So we would see how that goes from there. Maybe I'd switch to Scizor, Bullet Punch, see if they're, like, Sash Scarfed, uh, maybe Life Orb or something. Um, just try to break Sash so they can bring out Crobat to then go for a Brave Bird or something. But against Azumarill, which is the reason why I actually decided to lead with the Gliscor, I wanted to be able to knock up its Citrus Berry. So let's just go into this one. And uh, I just didn't want to auto-lose to Azumarill because it's such a good month. So we see Mammal, and they have a great pin on us. And this was also my first game with the team. First game with the team. So because we see Mammal, we talked about what would we do if we see Mammal. We switch right to Scizor. I don't care if you get rocks. You're not going to be Earthquake me, and I would block an Ice Attack. You switch to Crawdon. Um, I go for a Defog. And uh, I defog away your rocks. Man, this is super, super fast. There we go. So he, he pops sub Crawdon. All right. And I'm, I'm liking the subs here because that tells me my Crobat is the play. I know you're pinned. And we get that big banded, super effective U-turn. That's one KO down. We come in with the Gliscor here. Uh, we activate our Toxic Orb. We see the Weavile. We do the exact same thing. Switch right back out for Scizor. We soak a Fake Out, which is funny to see them use. It doesn't really matter. We they show Life Orb. We're in a great spot. I think we just U-turn here. We don't even need a Bullet Punch. Like, we didn't even need a Bullet Punch. They were switching anyways. We U-turn. Now we have our Weavile on the pin. We still don't want to see the Azumarill, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, Azumarill does come in, which is the right play for them. And uh, Icicle Crash. Like, it's... It's damage. And we see Wefty's Azumarill, which tells me I don't have to be afraid of Belly Drum, so I don't really care. And then they Aqua Ring, which is a little bit weird. And so I'm seeing Aqua Ring, I'm seeing Lefties. I know that a Protect slash Sub is coming. I go to my Crobat. Remember, Infiltrator goes through subs. It's so good. Aqua Jet, we soak that damage like it's like it's nothing. And we one-shot you through your sub. It's the best feeling in the world. You come in with a Mamo. I'm staying in. I almost Oko your Mamo. And you go for the Earthquake. They expected me to switch away. I did not. Um, we see Leftovers Mamo, which is also kind of not not weird, but like Leftovers Mamo is definitely unique. That means I would have probably KO'd a regular Sweeper Mamo with the Choice Band uh, Brave Bird here. But great example of a first game that shows just how Crobat works. And uh, yeah, I think the Crobat was actually super, super tech in that game. And uh, we're going to go into another one. So let's see. I'm going to refresh this page because I don't like those... Um, 
it, it, you guys know how like it, it didn't show the animations very well. But anyways, let's start with this one. So we see Azelf, Garchomp, Koyster, very similar to Azumarill, gotta respect that. We have better defensive options for Koyster, like Scizor and uh, Starmie. Gengar's a bit of a problem, Weavile's a bit of a problem, and Tokus, you know, we can just uh, not lose to getting paralyzed there because we have two natural cure mons. I think I actually lead... Do I... Do I what do I lead with here? Let's see. Let's lead Crobat. So it's Crobat versus... Um, Crobat can be Crobat versus Azelf. And I think I taught, I don't remember exactly how this game went, but I think I'm going to let the Azelf do whatever it wants. And if they want to click Psychic, they totally could, but they shouldn't know that I'm faster. They shouldn't know that they're faster than me. So that's why I'm using this to my advantage. I'm bluffing and getting away with it if they do happen to leave the Azelf, which I know I do in one of these replays. There's the Azelf. So like I said, Screen's Azelf has been super big. Look how much damage that did right through that screen. Just tore it to pieces and potentially put it within range for... Uh, a KO move from like my Scizor. I, I think I go into Scizor here. I go into Weavile. All right, Weavile here. Um, yeah, I think I just go for the Ice Shard in this situation. Oh, this is gonna be funny. I remember what happens here. Watch this. They're like, I don't want to get Ice Shard into my Weavile or my uh, my Azelf, and they just switch to Garchomp to eat the Ice Shard. But we're banded. Normally that wouldn't do nearly enough damage, but we're choice banded. So there's end of the Tokus here. We take a free KO on the Garchomp. We switch out to Starmie. They go for a Flamethrower, which was uh, a good play from them. I think Flamethrower was great. It would have been good versus Weavile. It would have been great versus Scizor. But we soak it here, and I don't really care if they Thunder Wave me. I'm going to Thunder Wave them first. I love Speed Control on Starmie. We trade Thunder Waves, but you can see this is a net positive for me. I just get to switch because I have Natural Cure. Every time I switch it out, I'm completely fine. And we get a free pair on the switch. They just scoop right there. Uh, that game was over. This was a turn I was going to go for Rocks. The rest of their mods have big weaknesses to Rocks because they're all common sash users so that's why they scooped right there really really fast game but uh it shows that like infiltrator does put in a lot of work let's just refresh this one as well so that doesn't happen again all right and so you can see this one my team's over there and this is a trick room team it looks like trick room obviously have like camera up crest looks like trick room so i'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a different way to play when you see people playing trick room in singles the best way to play around it is to just kind of let them do their thing and go into a position where they can't really get an advantage. Don't go, don't let yourself get one shotted and just sit on mons that have like big recovery options. So I think I, do I lead Crobat here? I should. Um, Crobat's just a great U-turner, great damage would have been great damage versus Crest. We just go for the U-turn and we go right into Glisscor to start our Toxic Orb, so we always have that up. And we threaten Defog, and so we just go for a knockoff. No lefties today, and we see a Mental Orb instead. This is completely fine. They go for a gyro ball. You can see this is a net loss for them. They're gonna have to switch to something, and I'm just, I'm just bully. I can just knock off. I don't have to be afraid of anything. I'm even gonna scout to see if you have anything to threaten me. Um, I was gonna let them go for a nasty pot there. I just soak the damage, go for U-turn, come out to Starmie. We've already talked about this is a good matchup for Starmie. There's not that much they can do. I want to get a rapid spin up. We get the rapid spin up, and again, no, they never set the trick room, right? I'm, I'm allowing them the free turns to set trick room if they want. Because it doesn't like really matter to me if they said it because I don't need speed control. I just need to make it so you can't KO me. Like you can't um like steamroll me. I need to make I need to get myself in a situation. This is the first trick room where I will always be in like a great position. So we switch out the scissor here. This is a little bit of a weird play. We see the toxic problem. I'm thinking like, alright, this is another perfect game for Infiltrator for Crobat. We see the spore, remember we're rocking the Lumberry scissor, so it's completely fine. And uh, from here I think we just U-turn out. And do I get, do I let the, yeah, I go to the Gliscor to block the second Spore, because we're already toxic, which is why I did that earlier on in the game, so I could always have Gliscor to be a pivot. Uh, they see, they switch into Camera Up, they eat the EQ on the switch. If that was Mega Camera Up, he'd be big dunzo but uh, they just scoop right there. Another pretty easy game that we didn't really need Infiltrated to do that, but what we needed to do was realize our opponent's win condition, which was a Trick Room, and just always maintain a board state that says, like, bro, I understand you want Trick Room, I'll let you have it, but... What happens is when you set Trick Room in singles with something like a Bronzong or a Cresselia, you don't have that teammate there to help you abuse the Trick Room. You're going to have to take your turns uh, switching to something to abuse it, and if I just always switch or always have a Mon that you can't really break, or just let leave you in with those Mons and just kind of let you chill there and go for like knockoffs and stuff, you're going to waste your own Trick Room turns getting ready to sweep with your Trick Room, which is never a really good look. So let's look at this one here. And you can see the team over there, very OU, very OU, like Scissor, Revile, Infernape. This is a great game. This is a super, super game. I do lead with Crobat in this situation. And I want to talk about why Crobat's such a good lead. So Crobat is great here because it tunnels our opponent into a very specific play style. If they lead Scizor, cool. I will just U-turn and go into 
Maybe my Scizor, maybe my, maybe Starmie, but probably, probably the Gliscor to be completely honest. And I'd go for a knockoff EQ U-turn out into something that could then revenge care the Scizor. Um, if they leave Weavile, um, I am a bully versus Weavile. I could U-turn it and they should probably be switching because Crobat has a higher base speed and they should respect that, especially on the first turn. If they lead Inferno, if I do outspeed Inferno, I can just U-turn a Brave Bird. If they lead Latios, uh, I do outspeed. I can just go for a big super effective U-turn. If they lead Dompan, I'll U-turn, break sturdy, and come in with Starmie to pin. If they lead Rotom, I will U-turn because there's only a couple different Rotoms that would be a problem. There would be the Choice Scarf Rotom, which would be able to Thunderbolt slash Volt switch me first. Remember, we have a little bit of points in bulk with a decent base specialty, so we're not going to be losing the game. But what we will be able to do is see that there's Scarfs. We can use that later. So we're going to lead up here. They also had good manners. They led the Rotom. So again, I'm completely fine. You're going to Volt Switch. You're going to do a lot. Not enough to KO. But I see the Scizor, and I U-turned that. So this is completely fine. So I was scouting for Scarf, and I got the info that I wanted. I get to go right to my Gliscor, get to activate my Toxic Orb. And it's super important to get your Toxic Orb up early. Because, like, let's say I were trying to soak damage from, like, an Infernape or uh, a Latios or anything, really. And I didn't have my Toxic Orb active. You don't restore health the first turn. It takes one turn to activate your Toxic Orb and actually poison you. So you always want to get that active as soon as possible. We can also use Gliscor now as a pivot to block like Will-O-Wisps and any other weird status moves that might happen because we already have a status. So it's really important. I would say this team, it's more important to do this than like prioritize getting rocks up early. So we see the Gliscor right here. We go for a knockoff which is absolutely amazing. We knock off the leftovers, and that's great. Now that Scizor is going to be only relying on Roost to do anything. We see the Weavile come in, we get a Poison Heal tech, and uh, we just go right to our Scizor now, and we're in just a great spot. We see another Fake Out Weavile, which is so unique. Um, we just go for a U-turn. We see Sash here, and I want to talk about this. We see the Sash, and I U-turned there. So that means I was faster than him. That means he's using Counter. That's the only way that Weavile can be underspeeding a slow Scizor. So because I knew that, I didn't want to pick any of these other things to die. I know I need my Starmie. Um, I know I need my Blissey. I know I need my Scizor when I U-turned it. Um, so I figured I'd go to the Crobat, who's already relatively low, considering they have a lot of different um, priority moves. Like I could get Revenge Kill by Scizor, uh, Weavile, Infernape, all these different things. I even Ice Shirt from Domfan. So, and, and we, their Rotom outspeed me. So I decided to fodder my Crobat here which I think is the right play. They go for the counter. But now I'm in a really, really good spot. I can just come in with Scizor, which is another priority move user. They go for an Ice Shard, which is a little bit of damage. We go for a Bullet Punch. I probably should have U-turned there because I don't want my Scizor on the board because it lets the Infernape come out for free. So maybe a little bit of a misplay right there. But we go into the score. Remember, we already have our Toxic Orb active, so we're already effectively restoring health. It's very, very common, very nice. They go for the Rotom. We, they expected an EQ. We knock off their Choice Scarf. Now their Rotom is literally hot garbage. Uh, we go to Blissey here. They miss a Hydro. I really thought about switching right back to my Gliscor because um, it would either block the Will-Wisp or block the Trick. Uh, they actually make the right play here, which is they just take my lefties. Um, and I really wanted to give them my Toxic Orb, but uh, it doesn't really matter. You can see in this situation, uh, we did lose our Crobat, but what we have gained is a full understanding of their team. We have Hazards up, and we're forcing them into situations like coming in with Dom Fan to Rabbit Spin. If they come in with Dom Fan, we switch in Starmie. That's completely free. You see we get rid of the Burn when we switch away. Go to the Starmie. They go for the Rabbit Spin. I don't really care. Now I get a free Scald. Nothing wants to switch in on Scald. Not even Latios. You don't want that thing burned. You don't want your Scizor burned. You're switching in your Scizor anyways, even though I have a 30% chance of burn. Of course I'm going to get the burn, right? So that's one of the reasons why I run Lumberry Scizor in this situation. So I can switch in then that, that pin that they get me. I can do that one time. It's like I get out of jail free card. So again, we're rinse, rinse and repeating the exact same pins. We're using knockoff, being very pesky, just going for good chip damage. Eye Shard doesn't do anything. I'm not a big fan of Eye Shard on Dom Fam, just because it doesn't really do that much damage. Um, just go right into the Starmie, eat these Eye Shards for days like we really care. We recreate the same pin a second time. And uh, we leave it at one because, again, we don't have any investment. We eat a big assurance. It was super effective. I don't really care, though. Um, and we're totally fine. Uh, able to just go for... I even kill with a rapid spin and get a plus one off it. So now I can outspeed things like this Infernape. And so because I'm already in such a good position, I just go for that. Uh, I don't really care if they get the KO there because then I can come out with like literally any of my other mons and just go for a priority move. Uh, I'm going to come in with a Weavile here because I don't know if they're choiced. So I just go for the uh, Ice Shard because I don't, again, we do outspeed Infernape, but I don't know if they're choiced. And I can recreate these pins over and over and over and over again. I didn't think Ice Shard would KO there, so I switched to Blissey because we know the Rotom can't beat it. And uh, yeah, in this situation, like remember, your Scizor was burned. Latios can't beat a Blissey. Um, we can beat that Rotom all day, every day. And whenever we decide to switch, we do decide to switch. We get rid of the burn because of the natural cure. It's super, super good. So here we go. There's the soft build. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can Volt Switch me all you want, but like I'm just in a really, really good defensive position here. 
And that's what singles is all about. It's like getting yourself in situations where you're not losing and where you're safe and then where you don't need to always win and like oko everything. You just have to get yourself into situations where your opponent can't really do that much against you. And it's that's not playing stall. Like I'm not I have a Blissey on the board, but I'm obviously not playing stall. I'm kind of just playing normal Pokemon. I'm playing just safely. I just don't want to put myself in a disadvantageous position. We go for a throat chop because we know we outspeed everything else. And uh we we haven't really confirmed if this is scarfed or specs, but Either way, we could just fodder the scissor. Uh, we go for the bullet punch here, and then we could have just re out the Weavile and Ice Sharded. So, this is a safe way to do it. And, uh, you know, I've been accused of only uploading wins. So, we're going to show a loss where I make a major flaw, a major misplay that would have gotten me the game. I would have won. But this is a bad matchup. Like, they have the Azelf without speeds. They have Manaphy, which is a huge problem for this team. We only really have Blissey to deal with it, and Manaphy can actually scale higher. And so, uh, we're going to take a look at this one right here. I have to refresh the page set all this stuff up let's just look how cool my team is over there that's a really cool looking team crobat looks sick all right so let's start this up um i'm gonna lead with i think i lead the crobat here uh but let's see what they lead with i don't remember exactly i lead scissor and why did i lead scissor let's talk about that hold on let's talk about why i led scissor oh i don't want to reset the game um i guess i'll just talk about why i led scissor if i lead scissor and you lead manaphy you'll tail go all u-turn or you'll scald and i'll soak a lumberry that's fine if you lead Garchomp, I'll U-turn, and I'll go into something like Weavile. Um, if you lead Azelf, uh, I could potentially switch to Blissey or Starmie to block a Flamethrower, but that's up to me if you want to lead Azelf. Um, if you lead Prugly, I don't care. It's a Prugly. It doesn't do anything. If you lead Typhlosion, I switch to Blissey or Starmie. And if you lead Breloom, I can soak the Spore and go for a, uh, a big U-turn to break Sash and then go into Weavile and Pin. So this was a great lead here. It tunnels our opponent into a very specific play style. And uh, they, they went for a Fake Out. doesn't really do that much. Uh, they switch Typhlosion here. I think we go for the U-turn. Yep, good damage here. And I can start recreating. I just start pinning with Starmie. You don't have that many mons that want to switch in on a burn. So you switch your Azelf on a burn. That's completely fine. I'd I would have loved to got that burn because look at this. So we switch here. They go for rocks. And then I'm like, they're going to go for the... Oh, yeah, this is a different game. Sorry. I, I just get the KO there. And that's one of the things. Like, Azelf's a great mon. Um, I There's one game where I get explosioned on super hard. But against, like, Azelf and stuff like that, Azelf's great. It gets so many different tools. But if you have to taunt with these mons, you can just get taken advantage of so quick. And the reason why we actually went for the U-turn there is because I wanted to then repin myself because I don't want them sending that type lotion back out. So we go for the U-turn, get the KO, and I think we come in with Starmie. Go score. The score is completely fine because we want to, again, get our Toxic Orb active so the Brelum can't just fish for spores all day. This baits the Manaphy in, which is fine. Like, we're allowing this to happen because they get their free tail glow here, which is going to give them a plus three special attack. And we let that happen. Um, look at this, though. Brelum switch. Oh, you like that para on the Brelum switch? That does so many different things. It turns off the Brelum's ability to be Toxic Orb. Uh, yes, the Manaphy didn't get paralyzed, which I would have liked, but it's not the end of the world. They now can recreate the exact same pin. I actually decided to let them go for this. Um, we're right here, right? And I cannot stay in versus Brelum. So they know that I'm going to switch to my Gliscor. They take the same time to repin me, because I'm the one taking rocks damage. They have the advantage. And now they have a good pin here. And I'm thinking they've been switching a lot. Um, I'm not going to let them get another tail go because I, I basically need to do about 30% so I can one shot it with either Weavile or Crobat. So I'm like, I'm going to go for my knockoff. This would knock off the leftovers. This would be a net win for me, right? I don't care if you get your tail go because then I'd outspeed. They kept me honest and ice beam. Great play from that. That's not the mistake that I make. I come in with the Crobat here. Um, they switch into the Pro Look at this. Whoa, Mal. Yeet, delete, repeat. Yo, banded Crobat. Cruise this we out here right now. You come in with the Garchomp um, and their Scarf Chomp. Unfort. Right? I don't think that I'm wrong by staying in there. Because I wanted, if I do enough damage, I can then repin with Scizor or Weavile. Or even Starmie can come in and revenge kill. And you don't really have any good switch-ins for Starmie at this point. Because you don't know my Starmie doesn't have coverage for Brelum. So, great play from them. Scarf Chomp. Come with the Starmie here. Threaten. Uh, they just stay in. Go for the Dragon Claw. Um, we go for a Rapid Spin to get rid of these rocks. And it lets me outspeed the Garchomp now. So, really, really good situation for me to be in as well. And uh, I just go for a hard switch into the Scizor because I don't want to die, right? And they also take that time to switch into their mana feed to block a potential ice attack. So they get the Tail Glow, I go for the U-turn, and I go into the Weavile here, and I'm hoping that Throat Chop is enough, and then I see Leftovers, and I'm like, damn it, it's Leftovers. So I shouldn't be able to really take it out. They're going to take out my Weavile, which sucks. They still have these Leftovers procs. I go to the Blissey. Um, we soak a ton of damage on Blissey, and you can see... I'm in a losing position. I'm down Mons until right now, and I'm still not in that great of a position because they still have the advantage to bring the Brelum in. Um, they go for a Spore. This is where I think we pop our Lum, which means we're in a really good spot. We have two Mons, though, to have Natural Cure, so this is really, really good for Brelum. Switch in the Starmie, block it, 
right? Get put to sleep, and now we can hard switch back out, and they can't go for a second spore because I already have them on a sleep. I mean, they guess they could have gone for it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're able to take out the Breloom, and right here, this is where I start to make my misplay, and I'll talk about it. Maybe you guys can already see it come in. They go for a big outreach. I decided to stay in because um, I just need to do a little bit of damage so that I can actually finish it off with a couple other Mons. We don't actually need Blissey that much, in my opinion, because Typhlosion Potion's still relatively healthy. I just want to get the Garchomp confused and pinned. So I come in with Scizor here. I know they're going to switch because they're confused and pinned. I go for a U-turn, and this was, what, this was the pin that I was setting up the whole time. I fought my Blissey to get this turn right here. Now, I don't know anything about this type potion set, but I like to run specs, and I don't know how this guy's being played. And I'm thinking to myself, if it's Scarfed, it's Eruption's weak, so I'm fine. I'm going to go for Recover. They go for an Overheat. They almost get the KO off Overheat, but they don't, so I get a Recover. And you may be thinking, I've already won this game. I should win from here, and I should. They go back to the Garchomp. I go for a second Recover. I'm at full. This is a bulky Starmie set. They pop an Outrage, which I think was super weird. I think Earthquake would have been able to two-shot. Earthquake would have been able to deal with Scizor eventually. Um, Earthquake would have been a two shot on Starmie. I think they could have Earthquake there instead of Outrage, but they Outrage, and I go for my one Scald. I don't get the burn. That's not my misplay. My misplay's coming up. You'll see it in just a sec. I switch out to my Scizor, soak the Outrage, and now I can just kill Garchomp with Scizor, right? I'm still, I still should win this game. This is my misplay. I U-turn here, right? Now, if I stayed in and just bullet punched, first of all, I'd be fine because Typhlosion would have to. It's Choice Scarf Typhlosion. We know that because it outspeed my Starmie. So what does a Choice Scarf Typhlosion have? Flamethrower, Eruption. We saw the Overheat, maybe like an extra Sensory or a Focus Blast. Typhlosion doesn't get the coverage until it gains its Ghost type. So when I U-turn here and go to my Starmie, I'm such an idiot because I know that the last Eruption did 34%. You need Eruption to kill my Starmie. First of all, I should have just bullet punched and left my Scissor in and made them lock themselves into the wrong move, brought my Starmie in and just recovered them out. So I should have done. But... Um, coming with Typhlosion. I could have just switched to my Scizor here to block this Eruption, or this Overheat. Because Eruption wouldn't do it. Flamethrower wouldn't do it. And, uh, there's nothing you could have done. I stayed in thinking, like, maybe he'll miss. Maybe he'll low roll. I don't know why I did that. It's definitely a misplay on my part. If I switch in Scizor here, he gets the minus two special attack drop. I bring in Starmie, pop a recover, or a Scald and win the game. So, completely my fault. Um, I'm still hoping he misses one. If he misses one and I high roll, I'd, I'd get it. But, uh, yes, I do misplay super hard there which shows that i'm not perfect either um you know these are testing games for me and people were saying like that's so you don't upload your losses and it's like no i actually just don't lose that much uh especially when i'm not talking while i'm playing i usually play pretty well so unfortunate loss there but uh it just goes to show um i should have been able to analyze that situation just a little bit better and realize they needed overheat to win so i could have walked them into that by fodering my scissor and then one with starmie but it is what it is let's send things out with a bang last game here Last game. And switch sides. So you can see that guy has a little bit of a sand squad. And we already talked about what we need to do against Brelum. We get, need to get our Toxic Orb active early so we can always switch it on that. And we will we will always check a Brelum for the most part with this Gliscor. Because even if we don't, we soak damage. You turn out into something that does with another priority move. So it's a really, really great situation. But let's go into this. Um, double sand squad. I don't, I don't think there's a problem with me weeding Crobat because I can U-turn safely against most of those. But let's see what I leave with. Scizor. Why am I keep leading with Scizor? I'm realizing that Crobat is such a better lead after playing these games, but yeah, let's talk about Scizor. Scizor U-turns here. Scizor could potentially get fire attack by T-Tar, which is a little bit scary, but we do outspeed most T-Tar sets. Um, but yeah, it's scary to fight T-Tar, which is, you know, I mean, we can U-turn it, but like, if I was running T-Tar, I'd rock a fire attack on it just to check Scizor, because this is such a common lead. Um, against Brelum, I think it's probably why I'm doing it, because I want to soak a spore, U-turn out, and then repin with something like Weavile or Crobat. That's probably why I'm doing it. It's also a decent lead versus Empoleon, and since we have the Lumberry, we can soak a Scald one time if things go south. And I think I might have been trying to check the Rotom here, um, thinking I could like switch into like uh, Blissey or even Starmie or something to soak damage. And if they had Togus, I want to see if they wanted to lead Togus, because my team should be leading Scizor a lot. And so I'm trying to catch them with things and make them take the bait so I can see if they actually have fire attacks later on in the game. But Crobat still would have been a better lead. Anyways, uh, they hard switch into Hip Out on, and we stayed in a U turn. So this tells them, and I'm greedy. Um, they don't see Life Orb damage, so they don't know anything about my set. We come with Weavile. We have a great pin already. Right off the bat, great pin. I do not care about forcing an Empoleon or Rotom, but I would like to hit, which I don't, because um, I want to see if it's lefties, and I can't see if it's lefties yet. So great pin. That's a great play from them, by the way. Um, even if I did hit them, wouldn't have done that much damage, but they got to break my potential Weavile Sash. So that's really good for them. And they basically all but confirmed that I'm banded because, you know, I could have done almost anything else. I didn't have to switch there, uh, especially because you're going to rocks this turn. So I expect the rocks. I go to Starmie. They flash cannon instead, which is crazy, which tells me maybe they're not rocks. Um, and I decided to just the Thunder Wave. Uh, I was playing a lot like this the other day. Um, I was 
playing with Thunder Waves. Um, I blissed the other day, and you know, today we have double Thunder Waves. I think it's a really good tech to like Thunder Wave and pull in because it makes them flounder a little bit, and they no one likes being paralyzed, and so it makes them switch when sometimes they don't have to. If you do, remember my Starmie set, I like Rapid Spin, Recover, Scald, and uh, and if they're if they're lefties, I, Scald gets mitigated. Um, and Thunder Wave, I can't fight this Empoleon. I totally can't. Um, there's no there's no way in hell I fight this Empoleon. But if I throw up a para and throw up a healing move, it might force them to try and take the advantage in a situation where I don't have to do anything. I'm just waiting under Sandstorm turns. I go to a Blissey because I expect a switch. There's a switch right here. They switch in the tokens. This is a good situation for me. We trade Thunder Waves. But remember, which one of us has natural cure? It's this guy. So I can just switch out again. I don't need to stand and do anything else. I hard switch out. I go right to the Starmie. This is a good pin. Um, but I'm trying to pin something else. The reason why we switched there is I don't know if this is Sash Brelum, and if I, let's say I had Psychic or Ice Beam, I could have won for that, but I don't know if it's Sashed, and I don't want to try to risk my Starmie for that, because Starmie is so important having the double natural clear set. And so I figured it's just a better play. If you want to try and stay and be like Sash Spore, you can Spore the Crobat. You shouldn't. If you're going to go for a Grass Attack, which you would if you were some sort of like weird, um, like you know, Sash said again, you probably wouldn't spoil the Starmie, you probably just go for the Grass Attack. Crobat can soak that. So I decided to go to the Crobat here, um, and they switch out into the Tokus. Remember, also, if you switched out again from the Breloom, which I kind of forced you to respect it, I thought you'd switch in the T-Tar to block a Psychic, but this is totally fine. This is a good pin for us. Um, and then they double switch again. We forced the double switch, and we cross poison on that turn, um, because I didn't want to lock myself into Brave Bird in case Rotom came in. So, really good play. We forced them into a double switch, and then now we switch into Gliscor on their Dragon Dance on T-Tar. And we get our Toxic Orb active, which is nice. We go for a Stone Edge. I don't know what their item is. I see a Life Orb, and I just go for Earthquake. I just want damage. And so they will be getting taken out by their own Life Orb chip. And so I just decided to stay in. Uh, I went for a U-turn that turn, but it doesn't really matter. They went for the right play with his Crunch because it can't miss. They bring back out their Breloom. I bring out the Blissey. This is a bad play for me. Like, I brought the Blissey out after this, right? I was expecting Hippowdon, and I wanted to trade Rocks and then go to my Starmie. And then Starmie would then pin the... Uh, hip out on to switch away and I'd be able to wrap it spin safely. That was my idea. But seeing the Breloom here, um, Breloom's such a unique play. Because, like, again, I should have went like Crobat or Scizor, but I really thought it'd be Hip out on. Um, and I guess that's my fault for. Because they still have like the one turn on Sandstorm, so obviously they're saving the Hip out on. But Breloom was the one mon I didn't want to deal with. I can deal with Empoleon, I can deal with Rotom, I can deal with Togekiss, I can deal with uh, Hip out on, but I can't deal with Breloom. So I do have to switch into the Crobat. They're rewarded by getting their Spore here. And uh, I don't want to switch to Starmie either, because if they, like, see bod me on the switch, it'd be really bad. We also see Rock Tomb, which is super unique here. And, uh, yeah, we're just have to, we have to chill and stay asleep. So we're going to go soak another Rock Tomb on the Scizor. And uh, we haven't used our Lumberry, I don't think. So, anyways, we see Citrus Brown as well. Super, super weird. But we have to go into the Weavile here, and we just have to walk ourselves in the Ice Shard. Um, they decided to stay in, because I think they tried to mock Punch. Um, and I'm completely fine taking that thing out. They come in with the Impola, and I don't really care. Go to the Blissey, we want to get our Rocks up. Um, and we don't really even care if we have burned because we have natural cure. So it's just a good position. We go for rocks. And you're the one that has to fight through para and seismic toss damage to even think about using defog. So like this is a good position for me. We also, I don't think, I don't think we see lefties, right? So because we don't see the lefties, like I don't have to care at all about like any of your mons. <laughs> I can kind of just chill here until you decide to be proactive. You can trade rocks with me all you want, but then I switch to Starmie and I have the pin that I want, right? Eventually, um, you know, I don't have to do anything. We actually stayed in there because I expected the whirlwind and I actually luckily got Starmie out because of the whirlwind, but that was me also being stubborn in that situation. So switch out here, go for the rapid spin. We're in a great spot. And yeah, there's not that much we really have to do in this situation. We just switch right back to the Blissey, recreate the same pin, but whose Pokemon are weaker? It's the Empoleon. It's like 40% weaker than it was. You can go to Tokus, you can try and throw up a, a Thunder Wave, but we have the double Natural Cure squad and we're just going to be in a really, really good spot, position. So there's the Thunder Wave. I don't want to risk getting para flinched. I can switch out, activate my Natural Cure, go right to my Starmie. And again, these st you don't really have that many mons that can switch in on this Empoleon. Except for, sorry, switch on Starmie except for Empoleon. So I use this Scald here to condition the them to switch in the Empoleon. I get Thunder Wave that turn. We're going to switch to Weavile right here. So we're switching to Weavile. We're expecting them to switch to Empoleon. Oh, we switched to Blissey. Why did I switch to Blissey? I should have just switched to Weavile. Ah, that's fine. Blissey's safer. I don't have to risk anything here. But once we see the, um, we're eventually going to bring in Weavile to fight that damn Empoleon. <laughs> That's the plan. So there's the Weavile. Yeah, Weavile comes in versus uh, Empoleon and Hippowdon. They go for the sock off. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll talk about this. I'll talk about this. This was a, a whole pin, a couple turns in the making. So we see the Hippowdon here. We seismic toss it. And we wanted to get Hippowdon low enough to where we would force a slack off. 
So we knew we had a free term. We all then would still pin the ground typing. So we know that you're gonna slack off that term. We know it's completely free. And we know now that you wanna switch to either Rotom or Empoleon. Just go for the brick break here. It'd been good versus both of them. One shot the Empoleon, and now you don't have anything to stop Starmie. So I can just go into Starmie like a million times over and over and over again. We have to switch to Blissey once to stop the uh, overheat. I didn't wanna go into my Blissey, sorry, my Starmie and get Thunderbolted here. But you can see, we're never gonna lose in this situation. We don't have to do anything spectacular and they just scoop it up. Uh, once they lost the Empoleon, it was basically game. So that's basically how I think you should be playing Crobat. I think it's a really, really cool mon and it can abuse some um, niche speed tiers because you don't have to always go full speed. You can abuse base one tenths with it and you can one shot a lot of things. And if you're focused on getting pins, if you're focused on putting yourself in situations where, uh, you know, you have the advantageous state soaking damage coming in off U-turns, Volt Switches, and things like that. You can get your opponent into situations where they don't really have anything safe to switch in on that Brave Bird. And then once you pick up like one or two KOs uh, with any Pokemon, your opponent's teams, as you can see in this game, they tend to kind of fall apart because they don't have the correct defensive switch-ins anymore. This guy had no switch-ins for Starmie once he lost the Empoleon. And I just think this is a super, super cool team. I love making videos like this. You know, I made a video featuring um, Arcanine a couple days ago. And that video did so badly on YouTube, and I don't know why. Because I I really think that these videos are really, really educational. So if you guys got to the end of this video, please leave a comment letting me know you got to the end. I'd really like to hear it to see who actually watches them, because I think these are a lot of fun to make. I think they make a lot of people better, and I think they're a great way to show off some pretty unique Pokemon that wouldn't normally get a chance to see play. You know, we can use the good stuff all we want in, like, online you know on on cart battles but what we can't do is like show off like super cool unique ev spread infiltrator crowbat like that's something that only can happen here but it is still a really really important part of learning how to play the game correctly so if you guys like this video think about leaving a comment think about letting me know your thoughts and uh yeah peace out guys i'll see you guys next time